Hi, and welcome to the video on how to use Logger Pro, as well as some other things. First you'll need to find Logger Pro in the folder. Here it is here. Once you've found it, you'll need to open Logger Pro. Your open Logger Pro will look a little bit like this. There's some tools at the top, as usual, and a data table on the side. Now I'm going to insert a movie. You should have taken a video of your ball kick or whatever it is that you're collecting data from. There's my movie and it will come up like this. I move my movie into a position I like, I might enlarge it a bit. Now I play the movie and I get to the point where the ball or the projectile is about to move. Now I've gone a little bit far there, so I'm going to take a few steps back and you can see what I'm doing there. just using the buttons at the bottom of the video. And the ball is leaving my hand right there. Now down in the bottom right hand corner you'll see some little red dots. I click on those little red dots and my tools come up on the side. I've opened the fourth tool down which is set a scale. And I'm going to set a scale of one meter for my meter ruler that I've put into my diagram. Secondly, I need to set my axes. And I've clicked on the ball to set my axes and center it. Now I can use the red dot to collect some data. So I'm clicking on the ball, on the projectile every time it moves. Click, 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 and you'll see the table is currently collecting data. Every time I click, it moves forward a frame and I collect more data. These three steps are really important. You do need to set your scale and you should have something in your video to show what you're setting your scale as. Now here's my data. If I expand this by clicking on the box and then finding the little box there to pull it out, I can slide sideways, which you can see I've done, and I have time, x, y, x velocity, y velocity. I'm going to use x and y, which is just a displacement data. I highlight that and I copy it, edit, copy. Now that I've collected my data, I'm going to copy it into a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. So go to your spreadsheet, I'm just waiting for mine to open, open a new one and paste your data in there. But first I'm giving my titles labels. I'm pretty boring, I'm going to call them horizontal, meters and vertical in meters. Whatever you call it will be something you actually want in your assignment. There's my data. Now there's a few things I can do here. First of all I can create a chart. Insert, chart and I'm going to use a scatter diagram now. And look at this. There is the movement of my projectile. Now remember you will have read the Excel spreadsheet file about how to neaten your chart up, change labels. Make sure that you do this. But you know what I've noticed? is it all goes backwards and I want to re-zero my axes on the other side. So I'm going to create a new column called vertical, uh, sorry, called horizontal number two. And in this column, I'm going to subtract 1.3 from every, or so I'm going to add 1.3 to every data point so that it shifts all of my data along to the right. And this is just going to reshape my diagram. It's not really necessary, but it's going to make it easier for me to work with. I'm going to copy my vertical axis across so I get the same data there. And I'm going to highlight my new two columns and create a new chart. Here's my new chart. And you notice my new chart starts basically at the axis and heads to the right a little bit more, which does make my life a little bit easier to work with. Now, I'm looking at my new chart there. And I've got all these different data points, but I'm thinking I really want to do some modeling. So first I'm going to right click on the data points and add a trend line. If I make this trend line polynomial of order two, and then I can display the equation and the R squared on a chart, two things come up on my chart. First of all, the model, and second, some mathematical information. Now it might be hard to see here, but I'll zoom in, and you'll see I have a quadratic model there. Not only that, I have an R squared value. Feel free to ask your teacher about this R-squared value, but basically it's a number between 0 and 1, where the closer to 1 it is, the more accurate your model is. If you're going to use R-squared in your assignment, which you're more than welcome to do, 
then you probably should do a bit of reading about it and make sure you can explain why you're doing it. This produces a model. It's not good enough for you to use this model as your only model in your assignment, but it does produce a model. What you could do to produce a model in your assignment is you could find a turning point. You notice that I've just had a look at it and I'm using the equals maximum function in my for my data. And I found the maximum, now I highlight the maximum, and then I'm going to write down that this is my turning point. And just a way of identifying it for myself for later on. Now that I've got a, an example of my turning point, it might not be exact, but it should be pretty accurate. I can use that to calculate my whole model. So I'm going to go to a OneNote file now and I'll quickly show you some of the mathematical working involved in this. And you may use this method if you want. So, your mathematical model in turning point form will look a little bit like this. Y equals A, X minus P all squared plus Q. Where P and Q are not variables, they're your constants that represent your turning point. I'm going to rearrange it, so I'm subtracting Q here. And then I'm going to divide by X minus P all squared, which leaves A equals Y minus Q over X minus P all squared. And A is currently the only constant that I don't actually know. So, I know P and Q. I can substitute P and Q in. Now, I can use my P and Q, and then every single coordinate that I have in my model, which represent X and Y values, to calculate a successive set of A values. Now, you might just calculate one A value, but it would be more accurate to calculate several A values and then use an average. Just be careful of anomalies here though. When you're working with data points that are very close to your turning point, these might produce very large or very small anomalies. Once you have successive sets of A values, you probably want to take an average. And if you take an average that includes some anomalies, it can be really affected quite dramatically. This will produce a really good pen on paper model which is a large part of your assignment and you definitely should be doing. There are methods as well for other modeling, such as periodic modeling, exponential modeling, um, and all those things as you go through year 11 and 12 Math B, and these will be taught to you by your teachers. There's AP and Q I've just identified. They are our unknowns. And we've successfully modeled our data. So, that's it. That is how to use Logger Pro, and it's how to model your data um, very effectively, all in less than eight minutes. So, well done. Thank you for listening, and best of luck with your assignment.